Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, June 2nd. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now over the next week, we are going to hold our two final Mass Retirees members only meetings for the remainder of the 2022-2023 meeting schedule. And yes, we do refer to our meetings as having a schedule. The schedule kicks off every September with our annual meeting, which we will be announcing the official date of our September annual meeting in the upcoming edition of The Voice, which is going to press today. That means that members should start to receive the July edition of the newsletter in your mailbox during the week of um, June 19th. So in about two and a half weeks, you st should start to receive the newsletter. But this coming week on Wednesday, we will be holding our, our Cape Cod area meeting. It takes place at the Resort and Conference Center of Hyannis, which is in Hyannis, of course, right across the street from the Cape Cod Melody Tent. As always, our area meeting will kick off at 11 a.m. Um, it's going to last about 90 minutes. Our area meetings are open to all Mass Retirees members. You're more than welcome to bring a guest. We always serve light refreshments. You know, that's pastries or muffins, coffee, juice, water, that sort of thing. And we'll have you in and out of there um, by 1 o'clock at the latest. We always have a question and answer session. And at the end of the meeting, for those members who are in attendance at the, annual, at the end of the meeting, we'll be drawing names out of a hat for a cash door prize or door prizes. So if you're in or on Cape Cod on Wednesday, you know, if you have time in the morning, come on by, say hello. It's always wonderful to see our members in person, have a chance to interact with you and answer any questions that you might have, put a name with a face. Um, if you're someone that we've spoken with over the phone or via email and so forth, it's just a really, really nice way to get to know our members. The next week on Friday, a week from today, we will be holding our virtual Teletown Hall meeting. That's Friday, June 9th at, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We always start the Teletown Hall meetings at 1 o'clock. It gives time for our members who are living across the country uh, to be able to participate in these meetings. Our virtual Teletown Hall meetings run roughly an hour or so. Remember, there are two ways that you can participate in our virtual events. One is by receiving the automated phone call, and that's really the preferred method of you participating. So at 1 o'clock next Friday, if we have your phone number on file here, you will receive an automated phone call from me. Um, all you need to do is answer the phone, stay on the line, you're going to be automatically connected to the meeting. The second way that you can participate is by calling the toll-free number that's printed on the back of your membership card. Now there should be a series of phone numbers on your membership card. In addition to our home personal contact information, you should also have two toll-free numbers. One is the Teletown Hall phone number, and the other phone number that's a toll-free number is for our weekly hotline, which is essentially the same as this video message, um, but it's just the audio version of it, or, and we take turns in the office between Frank Valeri, Bill Reary, Nancy McGovern, and myself. Um, every week, one of us uh, draws the short straw, so to speak, records that, that um, recorded hotline message for those members who don't have access to the internet or um, just don't feel comfortable being online and getting emails and being able to watch these types of videos. It just gives us another way to communicate with everybody. And we've had our, our recorded hotline now for many decades uh, probably going back 40 plus years. It's just a, another way, again, for us to communicate with all of you. So those are our two upcoming meetings. And again, we will be kicking off our 2023-2024 full meeting schedule with the annual meeting in September. That date will be published in the July newsletter. And then we will be holding our, our events throughout Massachusetts through this fall and up until about Christmas time. We will later this fall announce our Florida meetings. We are planning on a full contingent of Florida meetings for 2024, then followed by the Massachusetts spring and early summer um, meeting schedule that we are just completing now. So speaking of Cape Cod, next week, our association, myself and Frank, and pretty much our entire staff and some of our executive board members will be present on Cape Cod 
um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the annual spring conference of the Mass Association of Contributory Retirement Systems, which is otherwise known as MACRIS. MACRIS is the organization that represents all of the public retirement systems across the state. And what makes MACRIS significant, amongst other things, is that they are one of a handful of entities that are legally authorized to provide continuing education services and training for retirement board members. As we've talked about in the past, Massachusetts retirement uh, law requires that each five-member retirement board, or in the case of the teacher's retirement system, it's seven members, but those retirement board members have to, on an annual basis, um, engage in con continuing education credits and earn those credits, and there's a minimum number of credits that a board member needs to achieve every year. MACRIS, as part of its spring and then fall conferences, offers continuing education seminars for board members to receive the education that, that's required for them to do their jobs. And over the past 15 or years or so um, that this requ requirement's been in existence here in Massachusetts, um, it's really stepped up the, the level of expertise that our retirement board members have had. We've always had some great retirement boards here in Massachusetts with some really engaged members. And this legal requirement has really just taken it to the next level, and MACRIS is the premier organization that's providing those services or the, the venue for those credits to be obtained. So on Monday, um, both Tom Bonarigo and Nancy McGovern will be participating in the MACRIS legislative panel. They will be providing a full update of the Mass Retirees legislative proposals. Um, in interacting with the several hundred retirement board members and retirement board staff and other members of the Massachusetts public retirement community who will be in attendance at this conference down on Cape Cod. So that's the, the bulk of our activities heading into the next week. Um, but I also want to just take a moment to update everybody in terms of where things are at with the acceptance of the additional 2% of the so-called 5% COLA for FY23, which of course is the current fiscal year that we're in. Now state and teacher retirees received their additional 2% COLA starting last year on July 1st. But at the local level, authorization for local retirement systems to approve the additional 2% COLA. So in other words, going from the traditional 3% COLA up to a new level of 5% um, by, by adding the additional 2%. It's a two-step process at the local level. The first step is for the local retirement system, which is governed by a five-member board, to approve the additional 2% um, COLA percentage for the year. Once that has taken place, then it is a decision of the local government, so the city council and the mayor, the board of selectmen, or in, in the case of county and regional retirement systems, they have to go to the additional step of having the additional 2% COLA approved by a supermajority of the towns that make up the county and regional retirement systems, which is a pretty, pretty high hurdle to have to overcome. But I'm happy to say that we now have four counties, Barnstable, Bristol, Norfolk, and Middlesex, have all approved, fully approved the additional 2% COLA, the most recent of those systems being Barnstable County. And, and we cannot be happier that th uh, four of the largest counties in Massachusetts have now approved the additional COLA for their local retirees. Now, in the case of Barnstable County, in a very similar fashion to both Bristol and Norfolk, Barnstable has a long history of being very aggressive in terms of providing additional benefits for their retirees and sharing the success, if you will, of pension investment returns with the folks who the systems were set up for in the first place. And that's the way the process is supposed to work. So I got to give all the credit in the world to the Barnstable County Retirement Board, along with the other systems that have fully approved this. But in this case, Barnstable County not only were successful in getting the additional 2% approved for FY23, but they have had one of the more advanced um, COLA base levels in the state, which is now at, at an $18,000 level. And we're very confident that over the next year or two, 
Um, as long as the stock market continues to perform well and we recover throughout 2023 um, after the losses last year, we can foresee Barnstable County joining um, this growing community of systems that have been led by both Bristol and the Wellesley Retirement Boards and, and those communities in approving a COLA base that is in excess of 18,000. So as of today, we have 63 of the 102 local retirement systems that have fully adopted and implemented the additional 2% COLA base. And we're hopeful that by the end of this month and June 30th being the deadline for the acceptance of the additional 2%, but over the course of the month of June, we're hopeful that we'll have at least a handful of additional communities that join um, the current 63 communities in fully approving the additional 2% COLA. I also want to add, before we close out this week's message, some further good news in terms of the COLA. And this is, is in regard to the COLA base. A week ago, the City of Newton City Council unanimously approved a, an incremental increase in the City of Newton's COLA base going from the $12,000 that has now been in existence um, for the last quarter of a century that was put in place back in 1998. The City of Newton is one of a handful of systems that up until now had not increased the local COLA base in 25 years and this has been long overdue. I have to give credit to the City of Newton Retirement Board um, that has been in lockstep with one another in, in pushing this issue forward and didn't take no for an answer. Um, despite some setbacks over the years, they were finally able to, to move this provision through the City Council in Newton. And as I said, um, it will be increased over the next three fiscal years in $1,000 increments beginning this July 1st with a $13,000 base followed by a $14,000 base next year, and finally um, a $15,000 base at the end of that three-year cycle. And it just goes to, to show once again the work that can be done and the success that can be had at the local level when local retirement boards work together, put in the, the, the hard work and you know, diligent um, research and, and outreach and advocacy to educate local officials and drag this issue across the finish line in many cases. So again, thank you to the members of, of the Newton Retirement System um, who, who really rose to the occasion for their local retirees and worked closely with our association to, to help that get this done and to benefit uh, local retirees. And we're now down to five retirement systems that have not increased the base beyond the $12,000 level we're going to continue to work with those systems to help them um, convince local officials to do the right thing for their local retirees and, and increase the base uh, 25 years or, or longer um, of stagnation is far too long and it's really um, not an acceptable position that, that anybody wants to be in. But we're going to continue making progress on this. One last point I just want to make before closing out this week's message is that our July newsletter again is at the printers today. Um, you will receive that in the mail on about two and a half weeks they should start to arrive. On the front cover of the newsletter is an editorial by Frank Valeri and myself speaking directly to the issue of the state and teacher retirees COLA and some of the history that's been involved with the COLA issue in general and how we're going to continue to work to move that issue forward in the hope of, in the very near future, increasing the COLA base beyond $13,000 for our state and teacher retirees as well. So with that, I'm going to sign off for today. Hopefully you can either attend our meeting on Cape Cod next week or tune in next Friday at 1 o'clock for our virtual Teletown Hall meeting. With that, take care. Thank you so much for tuning in again this week, and thank you for your membership with Mass Retirees. We'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye, everybody.